Hi, beautiful ones. My intention with the Shamanjelic Healing Podcast is to be a platform that explores real life issues and provides you with valuable insights and practical tools to support you on your journey of healing core wounds and reclaiming your power and manifesting a thriving, impactful life that you absolutely love. You see, it's my dream to inspire millions to shine. So if you find these topics valuable, please take a moment and share the podcast and leave us a rave review. This helps the podcast grow and reach the people that would greatly benefit from these insights. Thank you so much for tuning in and investing in your personal development. I'm right here walking this journey with you. So let's dive into this episode. Welcome to the Shamangelic Healing Podcast. Oh, this is going to be yummy today. Beautiful soul sister and uh, Arizona sister, uh, Felicia Romero here today. And we it's so perfect timing because we're going to drop in how to uh, you know, to talk about how to break the cycles and the patterns of self-sabotage. And as we are mm. approaching the new year, the, 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 and the holidays of like, okay, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get healthy. You know, I'm going to really go for my goals this year. It really brings up patterns of where we've said this before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I'm so excited to drop in um, with this topic. Um, a couple quick quick announcements first, uh, because it is we're approaching the new year. I really wanted to give um, my audience and your audience um, a great way to start the new year, which is a new year, new you on January first, full day immersion, where we're going to go very very deep into getting clear about the new year um, in a in a workshop about that and go out on the land, sacred connection with the vortexes and plant our seeds of intention into the soil and then end the full day with a shamanjelic breathwork activation to clear it and anchor it into the body. It's going to be a juicy day and I love helping people start their new year right. So I'm gonna be there with everybody full day intensive on January 1st. So come and join me for that and start the new year right. So the link will be in the show notes. The link is on shamanjelichealing.com. So go check that out. Bring a friend, come by yourself, grab a spot and start the new year right. And if you haven't yet heard um, in the spring, a big dream that I did not sabotage. <laughs> that I really, like it's been a big dream of mine to open a center here in Sedona. That's happening in spring 2022. It's on. Exciting. Oh my gosh. This is the first that I'm hearing of this. Uh -huh. yes. This is amazing. Yes. And you're going to be a big part of it too. For sure. Yeah. You're going to be coming up and doing workshops and things like that. So that is happening in spring 2022. The link will be in the show notes. Um, and you can go to shinesedona.com or she is on socials. She's starting to make friends already. So you can follow Shine Sedona on Instagram and also on Facebook. But what I'd love your support with Tribe is going to the website and filling out the survey because the survey it gives us the opportunity to hear from you, the audience, of what you want, what workshops, what issues are up, what tools you need to support your healing and awakening. So go to the website, fill out the survey, and um, if you're a practitioner or facilitator, there's also an application there to come and be um, submit to be a part of the shine tribe of facilitators and healers. So I know you're going to be on that love train for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Annette will be up there hosting our retreats and all the things. So I'm excited for that. Yes. Yes. Shine is just going to be a platform for more magic, more medicine with the most extraordinary world-class healers and practitioners mm -hmm. offering programs, workshops, training, mm -hmm. sessions, astrology readings, Reiki, you name it. And we're going to have such a fun time um, making that a real sanctuary for the soul. So those are my two big announcements. So go check that out. All right. Sister, my sister, um, one of the things that you're going to find about Felicia is that she is really a master coach and a mentor for entrepreneurs and, you know, fitness people in that, in the fitness realm 
because that's your background and that's where you've had your ups and downs and your, you know, overcome challenges. And so, uh, and congratulations on the new, announcing the new line of uh, uh, Luna True Nutrition. Uh So um, tell us about that, first of all. I'm excited. Oh my gosh. I've been wanting to do this for so long on a hot tub, but again, all of the fear creeps in and this imposter syndrome and the well, who's going to buy, you know, my product. There's so many products out there and the saturation. It's like, I finally came through and I I've invested mentors this all of this year and last. And I was like, why not? You know, asking your question, like not why me, but like, why not? Right. So Luna True Nutrition is sort of that baby that I birthed this year. And I started with three supplements. And the amazing thing about these supplements is it's everything around Uh, even for me, like the years that I spent healing my mind and body. So I have a stress relief formula called chill out. It has the ashwagandha, the vitamin B, the rhodiola, like all the things that I took holistically Mm -hmm. in order to heal. So that is a soft launch and it's going full force in the new year. Um, And those that are listening right now can text Luna L-U-N-A to 480-530-5459. And I will send you out a free bottle of probiotics. So, Oh my God, that is so fantastic. What a nice gift. Thank I'm you, so sister. Excited. Absolutely. I am just so excited to get the word out, get people healthy from the inside out, but know that it's more than the, just supplements, right? It's a way of being, it's a way of living. And that's what I really want to promote. Well, and, and I think when you add supplements and different types of supplements to your daily routines, it is an act of self-love. It is an act of self-love mm-hmm. and self-respect and self-care, which mm-hmm. I think is you know part of breaking that pattern of self-sabotage is leaning into self-care. So yeah. let's dive into this topic because we were kind of talking about what is really, you know, what we really want to jam on mm-hmm. and this whole concept of how to break the, the cycle of self-sabotage. And here we are approaching the new year. And even if you're listening to this into the new year, because this happens all the time, not just at the be- end of the year of like, okay, I'm going to, this year's going to be different and I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to save money or I'm going to go after that dream or write a book or whatever it is. And then here it is this time of the year or the next month or the next week and nothing's been done. In fact, mm-hmm. sometimes we find we had a massive setback instead of mm-hmm. a leap forward or progress, mm-hmm. maybe things stayed the same or got worse. Mm-hmm. And um, I can totally raise my hand in one area, things like really moved forward. And in another area, things went backwards. Yeah. Like, Shit. <laughs> so, help, about us, that, right? and help our listeners out today. Yeah. And think about that. Like those that are listening right now, you know, when we, when we self sabotage and we break that that trust that that trust with ourselves and we don't follow through on the things that we say we're going to do it breaks that energetic trust with our own self and it creates this like this lack of self trust because there's this huge energetic leak right mm-hmm. and so a lot often times like when i when i when i think about the times that i self sabotage and, and trust me i i still struggle with this and this for me and this is something i really wanted to talk to you about on a hot tub was like the breath work that I've done with you this year, I've gotten to, you facilitated twice, two experiences for me this year and life changing for me. But what really came forth was the whole notion of surrendering and also taking a look at my life and the moments where I am creating that self-sabotage behavior, the fear of, of success, the lack of self-worth, the wanting to control where for me, I wanted to control all situations in my life, including relationships. So what I would do instead, because I couldn't control that person, is then I would sabotage. I would find ways to push that person away. I would find fault in them. I would find fault in the relationship in order to, because I didn't, I didn't have the control, right? And so it didn't come to fruition and I had to tell this year during the breath work and specifically this last one that we just did in September where it was like, Felicia, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you still in this pattern? And the first step is being aware of it. Because if you're not aware of the self-sabotaging pattern, you don't, you don't know where to start on how to fix it. Right. And so the awareness for me was just this like shedding of just, 
all of the, the shame, the guilt, the, the, the habit loop of that self-sabotage and being aware of what I was doing and then knowing when that comes up, knowing how to stop it. I, I, I really appreciate that you're looking at the why. If the pattern keeps, you know, repeating, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know anybody that can't raise their hand that says, okay, I said I was going to do this and I didn't follow through at, at times, you know, some mm -hmm. of us are really fantastic about that and, or in some areas and in other areas, just it, it's elusive. It's mm -hmm. elusive. And so I appreciate that you're bringing to the attention for all of us to say, where is the pattern repeating and yeah. to pause and ask, why? So let's look into the why for a second, because I think one of the most common ones, and, and tell me if you find this the same or if there's another one that trumps this, is, is around health. Mm -hmm. Whether that's taking eating better or exercising or weight management or mm -hmm. you know, self-care and, and health and, and really having things where you're taking care of yourself, because that's a wide range of things. Yeah. Um, or healing well, an injury or something like that where mm -hmm. we're not taking care of health. Wow. Do you feel like that's one of the big ones? Oh, for sure. And especially as we're getting close to the end of the year, you're going to get those people. And maybe you're listening right now and this is you. You're the I'm going to start on Monday person or I'm going to start on January 1st person. And the reason that that's a problem is because you're always going to be that person, right? That always just puts it off to, 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 there has to be that perfect time or perfect day to start when, when lifestyle and wellness can really be something that we implement now. And it doesn't need to be this overwhelming thing. And so where I see a lot of people get this wrong is they set their expectation so big that whenever there's that minor hiccup, like I'm going to be so perfect. I'm going to eat so perfectly this week. And on a Wednesday, you happen to take a bite of a cookie. Well, that's the end of that. I'm just going to start again on Monday. I'm going to eat what I want the rest of the week. I'm going to start on Monday. Like, why does it need to be this all in or all out mentality? It doesn't have to be that way. And that is something that I struggled with for many years. And when I realized that it was, it was stealing my joy, but also causing me to be uh, the all in or all out mentality, there, there's no long term success or sustainability with that at all. And so you have to really take the baby steps and take a look at your day now versus, you know, I need to lose 50 pounds by February. Well, well, guess what? That that's going to be this huge in your head. It's going to feel like this huge feat. So taking it day by day is something that I really, really work on. I love what I, there's a couple of things that I heard you say that I think are really important is that having such high expectations of perfection mm -hmm. kind of sets us up for failure. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't have a weight goal or a health goal to, to heal mm -hmm. something, but it doesn't allow, oh, I got sick. It doesn't allow some, mm -hmm. some, some freedom around the holidays or what, you know, some spaciousness for yeah. some, some, you know, healthy indulgences. I mean, yeah. and a healthy, I don't mean necessarily what you are taking in is healthy, but that there's some space and, and it's not too rigid. Yeah. Um, so not setting those expectations to, or injury because we can have this goal and then there's an injury because three days into your weight plan, you, you know, lifting a weights and, 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 uh, you know, hurt a shoulder or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. then it, I hear the other part that I said is that when there's that hiccup or a misstep or a setback, mm -hmm. it's kind of justified to be like, okay, well, my fitness plan is out the window yeah. or my diet is out the window. And so yeah. We're kind of setting ourselves up for failure and then oh, for sure. we're already self-sabotaging with that behavior mm -hmm. the, okay. the not being lenient enough to because i will tell you the 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 guilt and shame over having a chocolate chip cookie is going to do far worse to you than just having the cookie and going on with your day i often tell my clients because I, I still you know I, I work in fitness still i do a lot of corporate wellness and i tell my clients you know it, it doesn't, the, the moment that we kind of prescribe to this all in or all out mentality, it really sets us up for failure because no one is ever perfect, right? And that's, those are the kind of the building blocks towards self-sabotage because we know deep down inside that we're not going to be perfect. So why are we setting ourselves up with these expectations? It's like, we already know we're going to let ourselves down. Well, why, why begin a lifestyle routine? Why begin any, any sort of regiment with that sort of mindset, right? And so some of the things that I ask myself is like, you know, 
And these things you might want to consider asking yourself. And this is, the, you know, if you're at, if you're answering yes to these questions, you might be engaging in self-sabotage and it's, am I always procrastinating? This is the, like, I'm going to start Monday. I'm going to start January, you know? And it's like, am I always doing that? Do you find yourself procrastinating? Um, are you prioritizing instant gratification? You know, it's the, oh, like I'm going to, I'm going to eat this now or, you know, indulge in this now or overeat or binge because it's that, like that emotional, that trigger and not really thinking about long-term goals. Are you avoiding what needs to be done? Right. Knowing that. And, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this on a hot tub, but like knowing that you have to do certain things, whether it be work related or go to the grocery store and you consider continue to put it off. It almost creates more anxiety than just getting the thing done. For right? sure. It's, it's yeah. what I find that un, just unfinished business or a task that is out there, but it's not being done right now. It creates a drag an energetic mm -hmm. drag. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's the way I experience. It's like, oh, oh yeah, I got to do that. I got to do that. I got to do that. Mm -hmm. And it feels energetically so much better to have done it. Wow. Um, and then, then the energy's cleaner. Oh, so you, you hit on something that I think is valuable to, to, to unpack a little bit of putting it off because you said, okay, I'll start Monday or I'll start January 1st or whatever this is. This isn't necessarily specifically related to the new year only because this could happen anytime. Mm -hmm. um, and so is the flip of that, what can I do today? Even if I had, I'm going to, I'm going to up your one cookie to four mm -hmm. <laughs> just because it was Thanksgiving last week. And I, was like, I, I think I ate a whole pie one sliver at a time yeah. over a number of days and other people helped not very much, but so let's up your ante from one cookie to like half a pie. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just hypothetically, you know, just, this is, you know, for other people, not, not me. <clears throat> But, and, and then that putting it off I, of saying, okay, well, when I get back from the holidays or when I start the new year, then I'll get back into my fitness plan. Mm -hmm. What a flip could look like during the holidays is what? If, mm -hmm. if somebody ate the pie or you had it, had, had an experience, whatever it is, an, an indulgence, let's just say alcohol, cookies, whatever. Yeah. I, I would say, to, okay, so that's a great question. The flip to that is changing your reaction and your perspective towards that specific, whatever that is, the overeating, the overindulgence, whatever it may be. For most women, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. I, I lack the willpower. Mm -hmm. I'm a loser. Like, why did I do this? I'm going to gain weight. Like, ugh, all my goals are out the window. Like, we have these self-defeating thoughts that run on this habit loop. That serves us no purpose. Yeah. What if we flip the script? What if we said, okay, okay, I did that. Like I ate half the pie. Maybe my body at that moment just needed the pie. What did I learn from it? What, I, what can I do tomorrow to be better? What can I do right now to be better? Okay, well, my next meal can actually be maybe a really nutritious meal. Let me up my water game. Let me get up tomorrow and take a nice nourishing walk. It doesn't, I want us to really get out of our, 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 our headspace and our mind that those things are bad or wrong. I think oftentimes when we put these, when we, when we attach moral code to food mm -hmm. and we attack, let's say, let's say we talk about the pie. Okay. This pie, if we attach this moral high ground to it and we hold it on a pedestal and we, we say, you know, this is good or bad, right or wrong. It creates this subconscious weird relationship with the food. Right. And if we just and with yourself and with yourself oh, by being yeah. associated or putting it in your body. Sure. For sure. What mm -hmm. if we just release that the food is food, good or bad, right or wrong. There's no, mo there's no moral code attached to it. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to eat the same thing on a Monday as I would a Saturday. I didn't go ham on Thanksgiving. Guess why? Because I eat the same all the time. I can, I don't like go off or go on. I eat the same. I'm, I'm not really dieting. I choose certain things because of how they make me feel, but it's never this on or off. Right. And so I want people to experience that too. It's really this lifestyle. There's no like, let's get ready for the vacation. And when we're on the vacation, we go crazy. Right. Like it doesn't have to be this drastic extreme thing. I, I literally say you could, you could eat the same thing on a Monday afternoon as you would a Saturday afternoon. It doesn't have to be this all or nothing mentality. 
I love that you said that of just recognizing the pol polar swings of like mm -hmm. justified overindulgence and mm -hmm. then like the guilt and shame mm -hmm. inner spiral. So mm -hmm. I heard really being aware of flipping the inner critic that mm -hmm. is judging something is bad or wrong. It's like, okay, I did that. Yeah. And not not going into an inner critical guilt or shame spiral, but just saying, okay, that happened. And instead of putting it off till next month, next week, or when I get back or after the holiday, that not from a place of shame or guilt, but just from a place of healthy balance. Yeah. Okay, well, then I'll have a salad or take a walk. I just, I, want, I know that, you know, I, I've been in that situation and I know many have been in that thought of, of like, oh, if I had this thing, then there's guilt bullying that mm -hmm. is like, now I have to go walk three miles. And yeah. And what if we just see correlated emotional response? Oh, for sure. And what if we just observed rather than judged? What if we just observed the behavior? Okay. What caused me to do that? And oftentimes we can even go back a little bit, right? Because I suffered from, you know, I had a binge eating disorder for many years and and I struggled with that because, and so I, I, I would ask myself, like, why would I binge eat? And it was because I was constantly restricting. I was mm -hmm. constantly telling myself, I can't do these things, right? And so it would cause me, and I was very nutritionally deficient and it would cause me to binge. Guess what happened when I stopped dieting and I stopped restricting? I stopped binging mm. and I didn't have as much power over me. Food didn't have as much power over me. Whatever taboo food I would tell myself that I couldn't have, wouldn't have power over me because it was just another food. I could eat it or I couldn't eat it, you know? And so it, it's just really just changing that mindset. And, and I, and I often say, Hey, let's observe the behavior. Let's understand what those triggers are. And that will come back to our habit loop. If you know, you, you can, you can start habit loops and you can also break habit loops that are no longer serving you. Right. So oftentimes I tell my clients, let's just focus. And I, I don't talk about things that we take away. I talk about things that we can add to our day that's going to help us to serve us, to nourish us. So, you know, if we were just to focus each and every day today, what are three daily nutritional commitments, commitments, intentions that you can make to yourself each and every day? And so, and then you journal, like I journal daily, my clients journal. I think it's so powerful to be able to get our thoughts on paper. And so like write down those nutritional commitments, just choose three, three that are going to be dial movers in your life. Now a dial mover would be drinking sufficient water, right? But not a dial mover is worrying about, right? As you take a drink of water, <laughs> not a dial mover is worrying whether you have croutons on your salad or not. That's not going to make or break you. Why stress over the croutons or whatever it is on your versus? So, so focus on the things that you that that are going to move the needle, right? And that are really going to be the game changers in your life. And for me, if I were just to say my my three daily nutritional commitments are is water for sure, because we're in Arizona. Water is so nourishing, so good for you. Um, two, prioritizing protein because I know for a lot of women, they just don't get enough of it. And, you know, if you're vegan or happen to be, you know, finding other sources, adding the B12s and all the things. Um, so prioritizing protein for me is really important. And then I don't eat a lot of vegetables. So I make sure that I do get vegetables with my dinner. Those are three non-negotiables. My non-negotiable commitments to myself beyond anything else that I, I continue to do each and every day. I love that you're saying at focus on adding in rather than restriction. And I've, mm -hmm. I found that that over that has worked for me in moving alcohol out, mm -hmm. which happened decades ago, but it was like, I didn't try to do it. Mm -hmm. it. I just added in yoga. I added in more hiking. I added in um, green juice and, and more vegetables. And it, and the cleaner my body got, the less the alcohol felt in alignment. It, it felt, mm -hmm. I felt it was more, I could really experience the toxicity mm -hmm. heightened the more I just added healthier things, more water, more meditation, more walks outside. And, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of shifting that, the spectrum over a little bit. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that you're saying just, you know, add in three things. And I also think that it's, it, you, you know, non-negotiable. So I said, this is my commitment to myself. 
Mm -hmm. these three things. And I think it's important that they're low hanging fruit and not I'm running 10 miles or I have to do, you know, one hour of cardio fit or something like that. Something mm -hmm. that is doable, especially if you've been in a downward spiral mm -hmm. and you've been eating a lot and you, you know, or an injury or you've been sick. And so you're in a deficit right now mm -hmm. um, that to get back on board to, to do little things yes. that build momentum rather than, okay, I'm going to run a marathon tomorrow and, <laughs> you know, fast for three days and wow. lose the weight. Oh, for but sure. For sure. Small commitments that are doable. So good. Confidence. And you, start, oh then you start to have more energy. Then you start to feel better. Then you have the, the stamina to yeah. do a harder workout or yeah. to have a little more self-control. You, 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 you said it. It's the confidence. Like, let's think about that. You mentioned the 10 miles. Like, let's say your big goal was running 10 miles, right? And you wanted to do, let's say, you know, a half marathon next year. You're not going to go out and run the 10 miles tomorrow. You're probably going to start with maybe a walk to the to your mailbox, right? Or a walk around the neighborhood. And what you're going to notice as you're out there, as you're moving, that one mile turns to two. Then you maybe even walk a little faster. Well, maybe that walk turns to a run. But the key is to not give up on yourself. Because again, when we do break that commitment that we lack the follow through, it breaks that energetic self-trust within us, right? And there's so much there that we are, we, we all are in our power all the time, but sometimes if we, we push it away with, because we're distracted or our emotion comes through when, again, the control, the, when things aren't turning our way, or when we're focusing on the negative habit, the, the negative thought, the self-defeating thoughts, it's like, we are all able to step in our power. We all have that in us. It's just remembering that we have it, that we have it within us. Okay. So let's do an exercise right now with the people listening and watching. Yes. About start with the inner critic, you know, the inner cheerleader, let's shift the inner critic that has been bullying about whether it's a health thing or I didn't save the money that I was going to save, or I didn't get this. I didn't move forward in the, in the career or the dream that I wanted to, mm -hmm. um, or relationship, whatever it is. Let's start right now with the exercise is what is something positive that you can say about this thing you've been experiencing challenge, not about the thing where you're crushing it, because that's not where the issue is. That's not where the pattern is. Mm -hmm. You're breaking the sabotage there, or that's an easier thing for you to move forward, you know, move the needle in and you're, you're doing better there. So mm -hmm. let's focus on one for those listening and watching about an area where you're struggling or there's patterns where sabotage has been occurring, mm -hmm. not just a little, but repeatedly. Yes. And what is a positive reframe that you can say about your health, your finances, mm -hmm. your relationship? Yes. And so what, let's both do this right now. What is a positive reframe that you could do about an area that you're wanting to strengthen in the new year? Mm. Or not even waiting until the future, but now. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, let me think about this one. Ooh, that's a great one. Um, okay, I, I'm gonna. Uh, I tend to procrastinate a little bit. I'm a big dreamer, big ideas. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I have a hard time implementing without accountability. So I'm gonna reframe that I am not a procrastinator, but I am working on gaining more clarity in the thing, in the big goal that I want to create. Beautiful. Yes. Gaining more clarity. And instead of putting it off, what are you doing instead? Instead of putting it off, I am going to allot 30 minutes today to put that big idea on paper and come up with a strategy moving forward. I love that you said today, not money. I'm going to blank, but not yeah. put a timeline to it. Yeah. That is perfect. Uh, yeah. That I am an action taker mm -hmm. instead of I am a procrastinator. I am an action taker. And I'm today, I'm going to allot 30 minutes mm -hmm. to get clarity and put a plan on paper. Yeah. I love it. Yay. <laughs> it felt good to say too. Yeah, it does. I think just saying that and I think importantly, because a lot of times with our New Year's resolutions or any goal, we say, OK, I'm going to do that. And even if we write it down, that doesn't mean we have taken the action of blocking time for mm -hmm. 
the walk mm -hmm. or the the time to put the business plan or the, the vision on paper mm -hmm. or a workout time on the calendar. So I love that you didn't put it off that you said today mm -hmm. and you put a time 30 minutes. Okay. You're going to text me sister when you're going to text you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you proof. <laughs> and this is one thing that I think really helps with breaking patterns is some accountability and for sure. Okay. So for mine, okay. Um, I think it's going to be around health and commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, to, I love myself to prioritize three things every day, mm -hmm. three simple things that I do every day to love myself. And they can be different things, mm -hmm. but I choose to prioritize three, three things every day mm -hmm. to reinforce my commitment of self-love and optimal health. Mm -hmm. And today that is drinking lots of water, Today, that is green juice and supplements. Yes. And I'm signing up for your probiotics, by the way. Yes, today. perfect. Send them out. Because gut health is a legit situation. And so I think the supplements really take care of my bones, my detoxification, my immune system, mm -hmm. um, zinc, minerals. Like I am all about the supplements. So today, mm -hmm. green juice, which I have in my fridge, I bought yesterday. So that's mm -hmm. so. Um, and I'm also going to take, uh, just a 30 minute walk at sunset, just a 30 minute walk at sunset. It's doable. I can fit that in today. 30 minute walk at sunset. I will send you a text photo. Yeah. I want to <laughs> see that land. Uh, you know what I, you know what I started taking recently? Uh, cause I heard it on a podcast. I heard a podcast with, uh, his name is David Sinclair and he's a Harvard researcher and he's been um, doing like the anti-aging, he's an anti-aging geneticist for years. And he recommended taking a supplement and I picked it up right away. Going to be 40 next year. Um, NAD and not just anti-aging, like physically, like in your cells, you know, like cellular anti-aging and helping with brain and brain development and, and really like, uh, you know, preventing uh, like dementia and all the things, yes. but NAD. I'm starting, I started to take a couple months ago and reserve retrol. I started, yes. taking, I started taking those two supplements together and I have been loving it. And it really yes. helps you at that cellular level. So yes, agreed. Agreed. Mm. I've been doing NAD intravenous mm. and it's been a How game is changer. Is it, is it, uh, is it pleasant or does it not it exactly? <laughs> is it I, mean, I would love to know that it's it's intense, but it's, but it's so clarifying. You feel amazing afterwards. And so, yeah, I've, I've been doing that as, as a self-love practice, like every, yeah. I would do like every other month. So this, and I'll do one next week. So, yeah. oh, I, okay, so this is, we challenge everybody to, to yes. do this exercise with us today, yes. a journal, a positive reframe. I mm -hmm. am, I embody and not just delete, cancel culture, any negativity, any, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not very good at, and reframe that into I am, I do, I embody, I prioritize, I say yes to in the present moment. Today, here is how I will act upon it. Like, let's get it yes. implemented today, not January 1st, not next month, not next week, but today. I love the three simple, doesn't have to be a huge thing. And I think we're just wanting to stack that quantum leaps happen one step at a time, that if you're doing these little steps, taking supplements daily, drinking water, taking a walk, that those over time stack mm. and really help to move the needle towards great habits, that even if you that. have a setback, when you've got great habits, you're going to be able to get back on them mm. and have the, a, a great habit of a positive inner dialogue and a great habit of three things that you do every day to love yourself. Yeah. Uh, I think that that, because even when you're sick, you can say, okay, today, how I'm going to love myself is I'm going to rest. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lay on the biomat. I'm going to take uh, supplements. I'm, I'm going to take some time off that there's different ways that those don't mm -hmm. always have to look like fitness. 
For sure. I love that you mentioned quantum leaps and, and the quantum leaps really happens in the day to day basics. Right. Then and all of a sudden you you wake up, you're like, whoa, I had this. And this happens in business, too. Right. In business, all of a sudden you're like this quantum leap of income. Like, oh, I was I was here and I'm at this milestone. Like this doesn't even make sense. Well, it does. If you're doing the basic work each and every day the basic okay, so what does that look like let's go so we've really had we've really gotten about fitness and health and 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 different ways there so let's talk about the sabotage of our dreams whether you're in business for yourself or not whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you are um you know em employed by somebody and that's your career whatever it is mm -hmm. um we all have dreams for ourselves mm -hmm. we all have dreams for um, doing what we love and, you know, having an impactful life. Um, and so we're going to get to relationships too, and the quality of our relationships, but let's just talk about our dreams, things yeah. that nourish our soul career wise or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And why do you think there is sabotage there? You mentioned a little bit about this before, of just mm -hmm. like failure and and mm -hmm. control issues, but let's let's talk a little bit more about why we uh, why there has been a pattern of self sabotage and what's underneath that when it comes to our dreams or our business. Yeah. Oh my goodness the the fear of the fear fear of failure is really coming through for me right now, especially what's coming through like for your listeners is like not going after the thing because of the unknown, the risk, the putting yourself out there. Like what if, like our what if scenario is always or usually the negative. What if this doesn't work? What if this fails? What if I lose money? What if, uh, you know, people judge me? And again, the reframe is just changing that what if. Like what if you create this thing and you like create the most desirable life of your dreams, right? But we get stuck in that that self-sabotage in, in, in a way that like paralyzes us, right? Yeah. To really go after the thing. And that's where the procrastination comes in. Like if you are listening to this right now and you have that big idea, that big dream, that big, that, that thing you've been wanting to do, and you've just been putting it off and procrastinating, really asking yourself, why? Why wait? Why wait till it's the perfect time or wait for the perfect scenario? Because your dreams, they're not going to, they're not going to wait for anybody, right? The time's going right. to fly no matter what. So, right. I think that you, similar to what we were talking about for is putting it off. Mm -hmm. What can I do today mm -hmm. to move towards it? Even if it's just a little baby step, what are two steps I could take today? Yeah. And it might be do some research. It might be see if that URL is available. It mm -hmm. might be um, creating just writing uh, an outline of a vision for a book, it might be researching that other career option of like, well, what would it look like? Is there anything already out there? Um, what would I need to do to offer this program or create the service or whatever it is? And mm -hmm. just so my challenge, our challenge to everybody is with a dream of any kind, mm -hmm. business related, Big dream, soul dream, little dream, doesn't matter how big or small. What is something that you could do today mm. that would just be a step towards that? Yeah. You no, know, there's all these big mountains here in Sedona, and I've been on the summits of mo pretty much all of these. And, you know, the one that I'm looking at right now, Mount Wilson, you know, that's a 14 mile hike. Yeah. And you do it one step at a time. You do it by figuring out, looking at the weather. Mm -hmm. You do it like, when do I have that kind of time? You do it by looking at your schedule of when do I have time to allot that much time to do a longer hike like that? You do it by how long is the trail and what am I going to need? Mm -hmm. I haven't taken a damn step on mm -hmm. the trail yet, but mm -hmm. part of that is the preparation for it. And what are steps that you can take just for the preparation Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there's enough preparation steps done. And the next step is, oh, get outside on the trail. That's the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that it's really valuable to, like you said before about having the, the perfection expectation. Mm. What if the expectation wasn't to summit, but it was just to get on the trail mm -hmm. and 
not expect perfection, mm -hmm. but just expect an experience. Because if you are going on a dream of writing a book or starting a business or changing your career, it's going to be messy mm -hmm. in the unknown. If you've never done it, there's going to be setbacks and failures and unpredictable things. The weather can change. I can run out of water. The, those same things are going to happen with your dream of like, oh, I didn't anticipate this because I've never been here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, something that I did. It. Yeah, something that I want to give your audience, and this is something that I have been really, that I live by, but I also coach my clients with, it's that high commitment, but low expectations. Because if we, again, when we set those expectations, like, oh, I have to have my business up and running and I have to be making 10,000 by January 31st. Well, what happens when we attach our worthiness to the expectation of what our business or what money we should have in the bank account? We're, again, we are, we're, the, the confidence is, you know, knocked down, right? So high commitment to the process, highly committed to the trail, of continuing to move forward, of taking the steps, but low expectation. So not, you know, expecting that you're going to make it to the top of the mountain in 45 minutes, but you're committed to continue to move forward. So I love that. And it's something that I, you know, practice and preach with my clients as well. Sure. And I, I appreciate looking at the failures so that we can start to dismantle them. Yeah. Is it an outcome fear? I'm afraid of the outcome that I, I won't succeed or I'm, uh, I, no one's going to read the book or the business, you know, is going to fail. And to look at what is my fear around that? Because is that even true? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we'll sabotage something because there's a fear of an outcome that I'm not going to make it to the top that may or may not even be true. Right. And guaranteed that you won't make it to the top if you don't take a step mm -hmm, and absolutely. you won't learn how to be a summiter in life or an author or happy if you don't take the steps and figure out what doesn't work mm -hmm. and what you don't want is just as important and the failures and uh is what shapes who you are to be a better planner to to ask for help when you get lost to Ask who's been here, who's done this before, mm -hmm. and being humble enough to to um, ask for guidance along the way mm -hmm. and courageous enough to look your fears and say, I'm going to take the next step anyway, because mm -hmm. all dreams are going to die on the vine if you don't face your fears along the way. And if your fears are more powerful, um, and I think that there's there's if your fears are more powerful, your dreams will be weak. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and what you realize is, Failure is not fatal. Failure is not fatal. It's not. It's not going to kill you. And the faster you fail and the faster you get back up, you're going to create this amazing resiliency within you. You're going to learn how to navigate when things come up in your business. You're going to want to be a seasoned entrepreneur as you continue to build because you're going to grow. You're going to evolve. You're going to be, be able to handle more. You'll notice that your energetic capacity to hold more is going to increase. You're going to be able to hold more income. Why do you think what I, th I think like the percentage is like 78 or 80% of lottery winners lose their money within the first five years, right? Because they just don't have that energetic capacity or that financial thermostat to hold that sort of income. They don't have the know-how. They don't have the, 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 the guidance. They've never held that before. Right. But if you know, if you, re if you've ever uh, like, you know, I've, I've, read a lot of different books. And, you know, once a millionaire uh, who has lost their money, they will probably be able to be a millionaire again. They're going to be able to make that money again because they have that, that know-how they have. And the they've, they've, they've like learned the steps along the way of mm -hmm. how to budget, when to say no to something, when is, when is it an investment mm -hmm. versus something that's high, high risk where you haven't had the practice of learning Right. Risk versus reward. And you earn every step you earn yeah. it and you get you get stronger as you go. And yeah. this is where those daily practices of, OK, you know, I, one of my dear friends just wrote his fourth book and it's like, yes, brother. And he puts the time in to write every day. He puts mm -hmm. the time in to write mm -hmm. every day. 
You know, he yeah. has his days off, but he puts he puts the time in. And in doing so, those reps, even if it's 30 minutes or 15 minutes while he's waiting for something, you know, co something cooking in the oven and he's over there writing 15 minutes, mm -hmm. putting those reps in that he's become a better writer every time. I love that. I love that. His confidence when he has one book out. Now he knows like, I can do this. Here's another yeah. book. And yeah. that doesn't mean that there aren't mistakes along the way, but you, you learn from those at every step. So for sure, um, for sure. Uh, you know, and this is how shine happened, you know, mm -hmm. is just, this was big to open a center in Sedona I would and, love to learn more about that. Oh, I know. So, what part of Sedona? Um, it's West Sedona. West it's Sedona. In, okay. It's in West okay. Sedona, and um, it's a 3,200 square foot space. Like, look, I'll tell you straight up. I don't know shit about building permits. I don't know sh about fire codes, like all of this. Uh, like, there is a whole lot where my learning curve is as steep as these peaks here in Sedona. Like, yeah. hella steep. I don't yeah. know what the F I'm doing in a lot of areas, like, you know, there's places where I know, I know topics, I know transformation, I know the healing process, mm -hmm. I know personal development, I know that inside and out. I've been doing it for over 20 years, I've been serving this population of people like myself, like you, and many others that are having mm -hmm. challenge challenges health wise or in their career or in their relationships um, or with addiction or with self-esteem, with their voice, with their mission and are stuck there and are wanting to move some part of that mm. along the spectrum so that they can really live an empowered thriving life. And like that heart, passion, soul alignment, like when you talk about commitment, I am all in 100% in. Do I still have to face my fears of like this vision came in in August 8th, 8-8 eight, eight, last, in 2020, mm -hmm. 2020, in the middle of COVID. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, am I like jumping up and down to open a brick and mortar where businesses are closing down left and right and like mask mandates and businesses, you know, ha businesses are tied with what they can do and what can, and like in the middle of all of that, here comes this vision. Do you think there wasn't resistance of like, oh, hell no. How did that vision That's come in? Door. Do you remember what you were doing? Like, how did that vision come in? Like I was, um, what went through? It, it was in like dream meditation. It was yeah. dream meditation, and it would not let go. It would mm -hmm. not let go. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we have something that we're passionate about, the fears can strangle it, strangle the life force out of your dream. No matter how passionate you are, mm -hmm. if you don't face your fears, and I had to look at, I had to look and dismantle every single one of like opening a business during COVID. Like that's a legit fear. Mm -hmm. It's a legit concern. Mm -hmm. And like I had to look at, okay, well, how can I make sure that I am doing virtual? How I overcame that fear was, first of all, the fear of not doing my heart and soul was the right. fear of not being in alignment with my soul mission. And it was way more scary to me mm. because like, and to not even try. Mm -hmm. is way more scary to me because I know that I would have taken my last breath knowing that I did not do what I came here to do. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really get with that. This is a heart. Yes. Well, then I have to find out the how I may not know how, but I needed to look at every single fear. I don't have the money for that. True. True. I did not. So I needed to find investors and I hadn't done that before. Yeah. big learning curve about putting a business plan together and getting investors and feeling worthy and overcoming my fear of oh, asking for help. And expansion for you. Yeah. Big. Like I have been stretched, yeah. stretched, stretched. But what just happened? I was like, well, what's the next two, what's the next two steps? Okay. Go to the city, find out about the codes and find out about what would it look like? Let's just put a business plan together and let me start with a budget. And what is the vision? And I, all these ideas just kept coming and I just kept putting mm -hmm. things on paper. I kept asking for help. Who's done this before? Who knows 
more than I do. And I've been a humble mm -hmm. student. I love that on a hot tub. Yeah. I love that because that reminds me like we're never truly stuck. We are always one question away from being unstuck. Yeah. Just think about that. You figured it out. You got resourceful. You didn't know about X, Y, and Z. So you asked those who did. And this is a big one. Power this is a big right one with when you've got a dream, who has done this before? And maybe nobody, but somebody holds a piece. They've done that part before. Mm -hmm. If you're like, I want to build a community center. I want to build, I want to get my family a, 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 to do a sustainable farm. Great. If you've never done it before and you're a city person, like, mm -hmm. okay, who has done this before or even a part of it? They may not have all the answers, but I have talked to attorneys. I've talked to uh, contractors. I've talked to Sedona locals that own businesses. Mm -hmm. And I, I have been willing to learn mm -hmm. and not, and I've made lots of mistakes already and I've given myself grace and I've mm -hmm. let go, oh my gosh, of control. Like, look, I say Shine's going to open spring 2022, but the truth is, she will have her own birthday and it won't be up to me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that you surrender to that. Oh, and I love the name. Oh my goodness. That was powerful. And so I, there, I think when it comes to self-sabotage, one, we can think it's too big and it doesn't belong to us because I could have said pass and believe me, I tried. Mm -hmm. um, and so one, we can think it's too big, like it's too big of a summit or we don't know how or the feel of fear of failure. And it's like, what about the fear of not trying and giving up on your dream? What about that fear yeah. of not living up to your potential? And that was also mm -hmm. a real fear. Yeah. And like with you, um, like with the supplement company. Yeah. Right. What yeah. was what was a challenge or a fear that you have had to overcome that was unexpected or where you could have quit? Yeah. It's like raw materials. Raw materials has gone up so much. Right. And there, I have a certain supplement on back order because of it. And I have people ordering supplements and it's on back order. like that fear of not knowing e-commerce of a whole new business model that I know nothing about. I'm used to intimate connections with women and speaking and, 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 and being on this intimate like level and, you know, having this whole e-commerce side where I don't meet the people that are buying the supplements and they're just purchasing with whatever that's so new to me, right? All the back end stuff of that, how to automate, uh, automate it, how to have everything automated, automated in the back end, like. And manufacturing. Not only like and oh, manufacturing and products and like labeling, yeah, label. like oh, even, even down to the SKU number of like everything has to have a barcode and I have to register for that. Like it took a year to bring this to fruition because of a lot of the the the, the roadblocks that I was going through, like of not knowing the thing, not knowing how. So this is this is a super important thing where it's any dream, any mm -hmm. action. There's if you've never done it before, there's going to be a learning curve. You're hearing from both of us that there's a learning curve that neither we're starting in a whole new business model, a whole different thing. There's things that, you know, you know, that supplements make a difference. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think that it's really important to have a why. Mm, I have a vision, I have a vision of those women taking the supplements. I have a vision of her in her kitchen you know, feeling amazing and like taking the supplements and feeling good and having the intentions. Like I can see her. I see her. I see how she's living in her day. I see how she's carrying herself. I see the thoughts going through her head. I see that wellness is important to her and wellness is intentional for her. Like I see her. So you have to always keep that big vision, that why there. For sure. As a free gift today, I want to give everybody a, a free guided visualization for quantum manifestation, because I think your why is super important to visualize mm -hmm. the success, visualize your family living on that farm, collecting tomatoes that you all grew that turns into a tomato sauce that you sell at the farmer's market, whatever it is like to see the process, mm -hmm. see the your target audience, this person this woman taking supplements, which is me. Okay. So you can visualize me taking your probiotics and feeling good. 
Um, and, and for me with shine, it's like, I see somebody that has, is feeling disconnected or has a dream or a voice and comes to shine and is embraced and welcome and comes away with feeling amazing. They've left baggage behind. They've taken tools with them. They know their power, their purpose, and they feel loved and supported and with tools to help them on their journey. Like that mm -hmm. lights me up. Mm -hmm. see, that is amazing. I see individuals shining and shine's uh -huh. mission statement is to inspire millions to shine. Uh -huh. yeah. Millions. And that means it's not going to be just me. So I've got to let go of control because uh -huh. I'm not going to be the only healer or facilitator and angelic healing. It's been me. Right. So a big part of this is letting go and bringing yeah. forward other amazing light workers, teachers, mm -hmm. healers, breath workers, you know, astrologers, mm -hmm. Reiki practitioners, teachers, and saying, hey, let's work together in the fabric of community to awaken humanity and give them the tools mm -hmm. to break conditions, limiting patterns. And oh that light oh when I shine, others shine. Yes. So that gives me chills. I love that so much. Anahata. And you mentioned it just a couple sentences back. You said, you know, it's not all, it's not good. It's, it's, it's for others. It's for other people. And when we make it about us, when we make it like, oh, I can't show up because I, you know, I, I don't want to create the content because me and we need to make it about the people that we're serving because that will allow you to show up, show up in service and show up with impact and show up with energetics and that's powerful. Yes. So who is, so here's our question since we've yeah. just been having so much fun getting right to it right now with the dream that you've had, maybe you've been putting off or you're part way on it and have been stalled in some way. doesn't matter what area it's in, whether it's a book, an entrepreneur, you're a family dream, whatever it is. What is your big why? Why, why, why is this essential mission critical is it to plant, a, you know, a, a thousand trees in your lifetime? Like, what is it? Why is it important? And and who benefits? Mm -hmm. Who benefits from this mission, from this dream? We've just shared our why and our our the person that we're doing this for. Mm -hmm. And it's you guys listening. It's yeah. you guys watching. It's you. Absolutely. You're you're our why. Mm -hmm. it's, it's people like you that we want to, that we want to help with your health or your, your dreams mm -hmm. and you're our why. And so we're asking you, who is your why and wh or what is your why, whether it's a benefit for the planet, is it three generations down the line? Is it for better air quality? Is it a product or service you really want to get behind? Is it, who benefits and why must this manifest? And I think that mm. like you said before <clears throat> about three things that I can do for self-love. I would say what are two things every day that you can do to feed your dream? Yes. And the first thing that I do in the morning is I quantum manifestation, like in it is, is a quantum visualization. Mm -hmm. See it happening, hear it happening, smell it, ha smell it, mm -hmm. you know, hear the success happening mm -hmm. and see yourself at the top of that virtual summit, whatever that looks like, and use your ability to see with your mind's eye a future. Mm -hmm. Get your emotions involved. Oh, and already imagining what it's going to feel like holding it and feeling it and seeing it. I would love that quantum visualization. I love that. That's a fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yeah, for yes. sure. So that's, I think that we, you know, just take the next two steps, just like we mm -hmm. said with, with self care, mm -hmm. what are two things or maybe up it to three that I can do to feed this dream? Maybe I ask for help. Yeah. Maybe I do some research. Maybe I block 30 minutes or an hour or more to feed that dream with my energy, with my time, mm -hmm. with my strategy or what are the next steps? So this that. is another pattern interrupt because shine, I just kept taking, I was like, okay, it's way too big for yeah. me to, I, I just, as I get information, I'm just going to put it down. I'm just going to put it down. I don't have to act on it. I'm just going to, put it down. And then it was like, what is the next two steps? And then it got to the point um, 
Felicia, where the next step was ask for money. And I was like, okay, I'm going to really need to be in the right attitude space for this, of being worthy of this. And because I was so passionate, Mm -hmm. that translated to the people that were a fit for that investment and investments came. Oh, goodness. And I was like, oh my God, investments came. And it was like, yes, because this dream wants to manifest and I'm I'm do, putting in the time and energy yeah. and it's a vibrational attraction. Yeah. And, it, and, and there was lots of no's oh. with the investors, lots of no's. And it was like, okay, that was not to get into the trap of, oh, then it must be the bad. I, it must be a bad idea. And mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not good enough. It was like, that's not a fit. Yeah, for sure. Because there is, oh my gosh, that's so powerful because so many people get attached to the no, get attached to the, the know that that it it it, it hurts them. It, you they can feel it. They because they, they're so attached to that outcome, right? They're attached to the outcome versus attached to their big vision. Your big vision was shine. If the outcome was, oh, I need this. I need this money. No, 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 no. You don't need it. You desire it, and it is going to flow to you with the right and line people. This is where we. This is what you said earlier. One hundred percent. What you just said, hands down. And it's the shift I've experienced, a huge shift from control to allowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just like, okay, if that's not the right system, if that's not the right investor, if that's not the right location, Mm -hmm. trusting that shine or your dream, whatever you're calling your dream, has what aligns with it. Mm -hmm. That book has the right publisher. And if there's 50 no's, that's because that's not the right publisher. Right. If, 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 if in manufacturing, you're not finding the right manufacturer, that's because there's a problem or it's not going to be long-term sustainable. And to say, Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you for showing me that you're not the right staff member. You're not the right manufacturer. You're not the right sourcer. You're Mm -hmm. not the right location. And a level of trust to let things go that aren't yours. Yes. And to not throw a tantrum. Well, maybe a little for a minute and then get over it. (laughs) Yes, right. (laughs) Like, oh, shit. Because you can feel it. You're like, okay, I'm disappointed with that. You can can feel it. Just have a tantrum. Just don't live there. Yes. And just don't live there. I love that you said that. And go moving into the space of that allowing the right thing is coming. If I, if I'm in the right vibration, that doesn't mean you don't, you sit around and do nothing. You may need to research. I needed to ask. I needed to knock on a lot of doors. Yeah. And part of like, I was resisting that. And I noticed that there's a fear of it's going to create something sticky in this relationship or Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get the money. And I had to really like face every single fear so that I was in the right vibration to allow that to come to me. But it didn't mean that allowing wasn't in, in, in exchange for not taking steps. I want to be really clear. I took a lot of scary, uncomfortable, messy steps and I got better at making that pitch. I got better at explaining it. I got better at refining the business plan. And I think that if, If we set the expectation, not for a high level of success, but we set the expectation of I'm going to learn and grow and become the person that I need to be to birth this dream, Mm -hmm. then we can embrace the lessons and challenges as part of the journey. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the challenges and the obstacles, they're meant to grow us, right? Mm -hmm. That's why there's so much. That's why we need duality, really. Yeah. We need the highs with the lows. We need with the good with the bad. We need the winter with the summer. We we need it. When you got those yeses on a hot I'm sure that it felt so amazing. And so duality is needed. We need duality. Duality is there to serve us. Whether 100%, and that's where we break the pattern of self-sabotage. Mm-hmm. If we're resisting the setback, whether it's a few extra pounds during the holidays, sure, we can view that as a setback. And it's like, That's okay. That duality gives us momentum to say, all right, I'm in commitment today. I'm going to do those three things and just get back in. And when you have a challenge with your dream, let's just say it. 
and you will, you will have failures. Yes. Mm -hmm. 100%. Those are, those are the rites of passage to weed out those people that mm -hmm. are not committed to their dream and to shape you into the person that has earned that dream. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to make it feel so much sweeter when you get there. So I love that. I'm so excited for you. I cannot wait for this. And, and I'm excited for, you know, the challenges that you're navigating right now, because that's going to make your, like your supplement company passionate and purposeful and sustainable because you'll weed out and learn You'll have, you know, plenty of, you know, learning curves or around like, oh, how do I source sustainably? How do I create packaging that mm -hmm. and, and shipping and like all of those things? I mm -hmm. celebrate you with with mm -hmm. what this vision of Luna. Mm -hmm. I love that. Luna True. It's a beautiful name. Mm -hmm. um, and how she that company is shaping you. That vision is shaping you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this has been awesome. Awesome. Oh, I uh, love this conversation. It has been so <laughs> activating and like it, like even just hearing, and this is why, this is why we need to level up, not only in our environment to surround ourselves with women and men that are doing things because you've inspired me on a hunter. So even after this conversation, like I feel lit up, I feel activated. I feel like energetically lifted from this conversation. So thank you so much. Yes. And I think this is one of those tools because mm -hmm. you've inspired me uh, because you're on a like new learning curve, new business. And I'm like, I can relate to you. And so for those listening and watching still, you're our people, first of all, because you stay with it. And here's another success factor in breaking self-sabotage patterns is one, what you just mentioned, surround yourself with people that are overcoming the challenges, whether that's health challenges, business challenges, launching a new business, going after your dreams, family priorities, whatever it is, mm -hmm. surround yourself with people that are breaking patterns and and growing and manifesting their dreams because that creates a certain mindset of being a possibilitarian mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in whatever area it is mm -hmm. whatever area it is oh, absolutely. surrounding yourself with those people and i really think it's important that you just mentioned is is accountability because we've said it a few times to have an accountability buddy yeah. And you might be going after diff different dreams or breaking different cycles. One person might be breaking a health pattern cycle and implementing new and somebody else might be like, okay, I'm writing a book or I'm starting a new thing mm -hmm. and this new dream, I need accountability. And so I think it's really valuable mm -hmm. to partner with somebody to say, hey, let's check in every Sunday, mm -hmm. send me that photo, that text when you've got that done. You know, let's check in, let's support each other. And so I think that that's really important, whether it's one on one, a friend, an ally, somebody that wants you to succeed. And that's not everybody in your life. Mm hmm. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. I mean, sometimes, like I, I think I, I mentioned this before, or I maybe have a meme about it, but sometimes you get more support from people on social media than your own family, right? And yeah. some of you may be experiencing that right now. Fortunately, I have such an amazing family that is so supportive and I'm very thankful for them. But a lot of people out there don't, you know, don't have that. So, and that can change. Mm -hmm. I've had somebody in my family that has been a great support for a certain thing, and now it just shifted, and now they're not that. Yeah. And so it's like, but other people have been coming into my life, mm -hmm. playing that role at a 10 X level. Mm -hmm. And so to allow those shifts, whether it's in your blood family or your circle of friends mm -hmm. to shift and to call forward that shift so mm -hmm. that you're around people that are 10 Xing their life in, in the way, because even if it's in a different area of life, mm -hmm. it's the mindset, it's the habits it's the languaging, it's the passion that you, that is infectious, that you want to surround yourself with. Yes. Oh, oh sister. Good. This is okay. such a so excited. And for everybody listening, go to the show notes. We'll make sure to have that phone number in there. Right. Yes. That you can text. To, so give us all your details, sister. Yes. And that yes. way people can get what 
they uh, they can follow you, find you, and then also get that super absolutely. Um, so to send that so like, I hang out on Instagram on there quite often at Felicia Romero, so just my name. Um, I've up my TikTok game, so I'm on there as well. I love just creating <laughs> content. FeliciaRomero.com, and you can text Luna L U N A two four eight zero five three zero five four five nine you can check that out in the show notes and i will send you a bottle of probiotics i i have had such a pleasure being on on a hunter this has been so amazing you had such a pivotal role in my life this year i was experiencing and, and you facilitating some breathwork experiences for for me and the retreats that i was in and i am so indebted to you i'm so grateful for you so oh, thank you thank you and thanks for bringing a group of women here that were just hungry and ready to level up their personal, physical, emotional, energetic, and spiritual soul game in life and all of them in different ways. And so thank you for the leadership work that you're mm -hmm. doing in that field and also for branching out into a whole new way of supporting even more people mm -hmm. um, with your supplement line. And I'm excited yeah. to see that grow and expand as you do. So you. congratulations, mama. You're, you. you're a baby. Thank you so much. Oh, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. And one more thing, you have your own podcast and I'm yeah. going to be on that podcast too. So tell everybody where your podcast is. Yeah. So you can go to the Hi Felicia podcast. I, it's recently rebranded. used to be called the Diet Dropout because it was everything fitness, but I really, I felt this expansion and uh, evolve, uh, evolving this year. So um, it's empowerment, relationship, um, entrepreneurship, self-love, all the things, still fitness and health because that's such a, a pillar in my life. Um, but I wanted to just expand it. So you're going to be on the Hi Felicia podcast. We're going to be talking about shadow work and triggers and all the things. I cannot wait to talk about those things with you. But um, but yeah, the Hi Felicia podcast. Yay. Fantastic. And we'll be sure that when that goes live, we'll put it in the show notes as well. Um, and for everybody listening and watching Go to the show notes to get that free gift, the quantum manifestation visualization. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do every morning to insert your dreams happening. Feel it, smell it, taste it, get energized, dive into it. So that is a free gift. Go over uh, to the shamanjelic healing uh, com website or the link in my bio to come and join me here in Sedona live. For a full day immersion, I'm only taking a few people. It's going to be deep and it's the most epic, beautiful, profound way to launch into 2022 with a full immersion. And of course, go over to Shine on Instagram and friend her up, uh, Shine Sedona. And shinesedona.com is where you're going to find that survey. We'll have a link in the show notes because we really want to hear from you because we're here to support you in your healing and awakening journey. And we want to know what issues are up for you, what topics and programs and services can we bring to the table for you, our fans, our friends, our followers, and um, be a part of the Shine uh, family. So, so grateful. Go check that out so that we can begin to serve you amazing things. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Felicia. And please go follow, go like um, all of her jam, you know, wonderful things, inspiring things. So thank you for that. Thank and you. please share this podcast and give us a rave review. If you found something important, if you found something valuable, it means the world to us when you go and leave us a review. Um, that's how more people can hear about it and by sharing it with you some with somebody that you think will benefit um mm -hmm. thank you so much for tuning in we thank love you. you we thank, thank you. you go for it